Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today we received a rather extensive update to the DCS World 2.7 Open Beta that came with a number of fantastic additions to DCS World including ground units and a brand new and very cool new weapon for the FA-18C Hornet. Of course that is the AGM-84H Slam ER a long-range land attack version of the original AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship cruise missile. Now this version of the Harpoon I have always thought is very mean looking and very sinister looking based off of the way the seeker head is actually shaped. It definitely looks like it was meant to kill people. Ever since I saw diagrams and photographs of it in books and magazines. Ever since I was a little kid, I have always thought it was the meanest looking weapon in the US arsenal. Another very welcome addition that I'm sure you guys are going to be very happy about is the ability to carry more flares in the FA-18C. However, I'm so used to being stingy with my flares and used to carrying only 30 of them in the F-18, I might as well just carry 30 flares and 90 chaff now. That'll really help me in those very contested airspaces with lots of SAMs and lots of radar guided threats and be able to just pump out a heck of a lot more chaff. But of course that's up to you and how you weaponeer your jet. Alright, so let's go ahead and put on the barometric altitude hold mode now that we're up at a high altitude. And of course uh, Matt Wagner made a fantastic tutorial video on how to use the AGM-84H but it's always good to hear the same thing from multiple people because that can really solidify your knowledge on a topic if you hear the same thing from multiple voices. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our air to ground master mode. Of course ensure that our master arm is set to arm which it is always by default when you air start the aircraft. We're going to select our slam ERs up here at the top, the SLMR. We're also going to select our AWW-13 data link pod as well. First thing we want to do right off the bat here, just to make sure we don't forget it in a later step, is we're going to actually set our SLAM ERs to actually send data link information, that data link video, to our data link pod by going to the WEP page and selecting both of our SLAM ERs at the same time, so that way both weapons will definitely be sending that data link information to our pod and we'll be able to display it on our right DDI here as soon as we get to that step. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to set up my weapons. We're going to go ahead and fire the first slam off of our right wing. We're going to make sure the mode is set to TOO. The flight path we're going to leave at medium. I want it to be at a lower altitude so that's out of the way of any um, civilian aircraft that might be flying over the area towards Iraq or Saudi Arabia or any of those kind of countries while also being a little bit higher than the low level so that way we can get some extended range out of it. E-Fuse we're going to set to instantaneous and then we're also going to come down to our HSI. We're going to select our target point of waypoint 3. We're going to go waypoint designate and at this point we should have an in-range symbol on our HUD, letting us know that our SLAM ER is in range of this target of opportunity that we've selected. Now we're going to go to the steer point, and just like in Matt Wagner's video, we're going to use waypoints in order to actually tell the weapon which steer points to fly through. We're going to send one weapon to the north of the target, and one weapon to the south of the target. So on the UFC, on the ODU buttons, we're going to select steer point 1, we're going to select waypoint, and we're going to input waypoint 1 for its first steer point, waypoint 2, waypoint for its second steer point, and we're not going to set a steer point 3, that's going to be its target point. We're then going to open up the slam display right here. We're going to come down to UFC, distance, 20 nautical miles, that way it'll turn on its seeker head and start sending data link information to our data link pod when it's 20 nautical miles away from the target. Alright, so we're going to ensure that our release type is manual. It is by default, but I always like to reselect that just in case. And everything is looking ready. We're ready on station 8. Slam ER is set for the data link pod. And I think we should be good to go. Our alignment quality is good. 
and we can see that our target point right out here on the air-to-ground radar is outside of Damascus uh, proper at a small airfield. Our targets are going to be some AN-30s. That is a small turboprop ca prop cargo aircraft that has been delivering weapons to insurgents at austere airfields across Syria, and it's time to finally take them out now that we've caught them on the ramp. So here goes our first weapon. There it goes. We're now going to go back to the menu, back to the stores page. We're going to step to our second slam ER, which it says ready. Our data link is already set to slam ER, so that is perfect. Mode TOO. Flight, we're going to set to medium again. E fuse is already set to instantaneous. We're going to ensure that we still have our target point set up, which we do. And we're going to select some steer points for this missile now. Going to use waypoint five, enter, steer point two, waypoint four, enter, and we are ready to launch this second missile. However, we're going to go to slam display, UFC, distance, and we'll have it start to send data link video at 20 nautical miles, just like we did with the other weapon as well. We're waiting just a moment here in order to allow that missile to build up some separation so we have some time to direct these missiles once they're in the air and sending data link info. So let's go ahead and fire this second weapon. There it goes. Next thing we'll do is we'll open our data link pod display on this here. So UFC, we can switch back and forth between the two weapons by going channel 2 and channel 8 that corresponds to station 2 and station 8 on the aircraft respectively. We can see that channel 2 is now 52 nautical miles away from the target area and our weapon from station 8 is now 48 nautical miles. So it seems like we have weapons that are closer and weapons that are further away and that's exactly what we wanted for this demonstration. If we look at the weapons, we can see them moving across and we can see they're definitely following their steer point commands. This weapon is going the northern route, while this weapon takes a southern route and looks like it's going to fly through a cloud bank. Just like Matt Wagner said in his video, Having a nice high altitude for your aircraft is going to allow you to have a much better time getting the data link video up onto your DDIs, simply because your line of sight is less likely to be obstructed by mountains or any terrain or any kind of weird atmospherics. So let's go ahead and open up the F-10 map again, and let's take a look at these weapons and their flight path. And we'll kind of speed up time a little bit here for us. And we can see things are definitely moving a little bit faster. And we can see our AN-30 targets are out here at Saikal Air Base in eastern Syria. And let's take a look at the progress of these missiles. Now we can see its target airbase is right over there at about the 2 o'clock position from the seeker head of this missile. Let's head back to the cockpit where we can see our missiles are actually ready for us to start tracking them down into a target. We're going to go sensor select right to ensure that our right DDI is our sensor of interest for our TDC. And we have our actual TOO waypoint situated on top of the southern AN-30 on the ramp. So we're going to check our other missile here and see how far away that one is. This one is just about in range to actually start sending data link feed to us. So we'll stay with our channel 8 missile. And we're going to have to send it towards the northern coot. So we're going to press TDC down and push the crosshairs over the coot that is on 
our left in relation to the feed that we're getting from the missile itself. I imagine that this is going to be a lot of fun for players to, on public servers, actually destroy aircraft that are taxiing out on the ramp flown by other players. So at this point, we have the two missiles targeted at two different aircraft. So even if we didn't use the data link on our second missile that's coming in from the south, we know that we'll still hit both targets because that one will be guided in inertially into that southern coot that we can see in the video feed at this point. Just keep sweetening up this picture on the target. Pressing the TDC to press and then using the TDC switch, of course. And here, let's go ahead and pause it. And then we will get a very cool view of the target area from our second missile. And we should be able to see that first missile explode on that northern AN-30 on the ramp down there. And kaboom. There it is. Nice. So we'll head back to our target, or our cockpit, that is. UFC, channel, two, enter. And there is the video feed from our second missile. Now there's a lot of smoke down there obscuring the target. So we may have to wait until we're very close to actually target the second AN-30 that may be down there. Trying to see this is definitely something that can definitely happen with the uh, fog of war, so to speak. All right, I can just barely see it. There we go. We're going to have this missile fly to the correct spot to target the second aircraft as well as we possibly can. And kaboom. That is the second shack on that second AN-30. As we take a look at the F-10 map, you can see here at Saikal, there is no longer any statics here at this airbase, letting us know that we have destroyed both of those aircraft. Very, very cool new weapon. And I think people are going to have a lot of fun with it. And I can't wait to see videos on YouTube and clips and whatnot of people actually using these weapons, just like they do in the JF-17 with the AKG, actually hitting players as they're taxiing out in PvP multiplayer servers. I think that'll be pretty funny, and it'll be a very cool weapon to destroy enemy air defenses such as EW radars, SAM radars, things of that nature that are going to be very difficult to get in close to with a manned aircraft that will be extremely dangerous and allow players to degrade enemy air defenses before actually sending aircraft deep into bad guy territory to actually launch harms or uh, engage targets with JDAMs or laser guided bombs, things of that nature. So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, I definitely enjoyed making it and uh, fly safe out there and of course stay healthy and we'll see it in the next one.